Listen now, in all seriousness, if your spouse starts becoming number one, your foundation will be shaky because your spouse is, is a flawed human being. I don't know if you knew that. Now, some of you guys that just got married, you're saying, ah, oh, whatever, man. You know, I can, I can see you. you guys that just got married, you're all a little bit closer together, you know. And, yeah. So awesome. Hey, just give it time. Okay, no. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm always closer to my wife, and I think I, I love my wife. She's the best. But you know what? She's number two. As great as she is, she's number two. And, and let me just say this also to you single folks. Some single folks will have this warped version image in their mind that just say, if I can just get married to that right guy, that right gal, then everything will be good. My life will be okay. Listen now. Hear your pastor. Number one is God. Develop that love, intimate relationship with God so you can get to the point where you're completely dependent on God and God alone. And then when, that's, when God sends that spouse, you're waiting on that spouse, and God sends that spouse to you, that's just gravy. That's just, hey, that's an extra benefit. But in, if you haven't got to that point of fully dependent on God and God alone, and you're trying to walk into a marriage and thinking that they're going to be your fulfillment, your foundation, you will fail. Trust me. I've seen it time and time again. Save yourself the headache. Christ first. God first. Number one. Then you come to number two. And let me say, <laughs> marriage is great. You got God number one, your marriage will be unbelievable. If you and your spouse, it's like this triangle. Instead of looking at each other, you're looking at God, and it's this building this triangle. Life works in an amazing way. Turn to Ephesians 5. And be able to, and again, we've gone through this text, and so we won't really really dig in, but let's just again glean some of these, these quick points about your spouse and putting them number two in your life. In fact, if you want to on your sheet, you can even put Ephesians 5, 21 through 33 on there if you want. It'll cover both wives and husbands. Let me uh, also just add before we read Ephesians 5, the first commandment is you shall not have any other gods before me. And that includes wife, husband, kids, job, the rest of them that we'll go through. You shall not have any other gods before me. Not that God's a big ogre in the sky saying, I want to throw salt in your game. Because he created you, he, know how, he knows how life works best. That's why he's giving you that commandment. Now, Ephesians 5 and 21 we start there where the Bible says, Submit to one another in the fear of God. Wives, verse 22, Submit to your husbands as to the Lord. Right? A husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Verse 25. Husbands, you guys know this by now. What's your one rule? One rule, guys, since we're guys. Love your wife, thank you. As Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Remember the word is agape, unconditionally. It doesn't matter if she's lovable. Love her. And here it is. Tune in. Verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. Guys, wash your wives in the word. Take time with her in the word of God. Pause right there for a second. Let me just, let me just touch on this real quick. Um, and let me just say, you don't have to be Billy Graham. You don't have to, I've said this before, you don't have to be, you know, Charles Wendell, some great theologian to water your wife in the Word of God. You really don't. You just got to, you know, some of us busy people, I'll give you an example. My wife and I, um, either Monday or Tuesday, whatever day we have off, we drop our kids off at school and we go have a breakfast together. We grab our Bibles, whatever our Bible reading, Bible in two years, and we read it together and we, we talk about it. Now, sometimes we'll go into some other area of Scripture, and I'm not, you know, I don't have a five-point message prepared for my wife, you know. In fact, it'd probably be better if she had one for me, because then maybe I could learn something, and you guys could be benefited from it. She, you know, knows the word, but no, it's just, we're just connecting to the word. We're having this discussion over some, you know, pancakes. You know, we've been, been hitting these chocolate chip, uh, uh, what is it, pancakes over at, uh, well, Pete, banging, you know what I mean? Take your time. Them in the word. 
And here's what happens. Jump to verse 29 in Ephesians 5. Watch this. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. Pause right there. I, in my Bible, you can go ahead and underline if you want. I circled nourish and cherish. Nourish and cherish. And here's the picture God gave me. He, he wants me to ask the question to you and to me. What does our wife mean? What does our wife look like spiritually? Is she spiritually anorexic? Are you nourishing her and cherishing her? Is she getting fed the word of God? Is there an investment in your wife? It's a powerful picture for me because there's times, right, that, that you know what, I'll fail in that. In the business of life, I'll have God number one, and I might just go right to job down to number four, and I'll skip the wife part. And there'll be times where I'll, I'll, I'll be able to look, and God will bring vision to her spirit, and she's, she's anorexic. She, she, there's nothing to her. Guys, powerful, that, that connection right there. And ladies, same way, man. Respecting that husband. Look at verse 33. And that really gets down to the nitty gritty. Again, we've, we've gone over this text a little bit in more detail, but the Cliff Notes version of it is great. It's, he sums it up, Paul sums it up in Ephesians 5 for us. Nevertheless, in verse 33, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself. That's agape. And let the wife see that she respects her husband. Love, respect. Easy, right? Or not so easy. With God's power, you can do it. You can make it work. God will, will help you make it work. So we see that. We see God number one. We see uh, spouse number two. Um, let, me, let me also just throw this in in just a couple practical ways and uh, for guys. One of the things that I've done, even in my car, I've got a picture of my wife in my car. You know? Have, wife, have eyes for your wife and your wife only. Put her right there. You know, take a pretty good looking picture. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be, you know, but you know, nice. And, and, and don't put it in the middle of your car, though. Put, put it kind of like by your tachometer or whatever, you know, just put it right there. So it's just for your eyes only. And, um, just challenge you to do that, man. Also, um, one thing that we've implemented in our life, we're busy people. I think most of us in here probably attest to that. If we, we've scheduled. We have a time once a week where we, we look at our week and we, we say, what's the, what's the week look like? That gives us communication. That gives us the ability to have that connection and, and know what to expect. Man, this looks like a pretty busy week. Let's, let's kind of let's protect this day right here. Get out, get out of the calendar. Get out of the planner. Again, practical things that you can put in place where you have God first, spouse number two. Um, and then we move to what's three? Guys, what's three? You sticky note. Kids, there we go. Why not? See? You guys are pretty smart. There you go. Kids, number three. Now, some of you young folks are going, well, and we're single folks. I don't, you know, I'm not married. I don't have kids. You can put family as two and three if you want. You can just put family right there. Now, kids. Kids are number three. Three. God, spouse, kids. You got to hear it. God, spouse, kids. The way I kind of like to think about it is when God made man, he, what did he do? He first made Adam. He took the rib, then he took woman. Then they got together, right? And then they had two numbers, Cain and Abel. They had these kids here. But that puts in perfect priority. It's God first, then it's spouse, then it's kids. It's not reversed. And sometimes, I know it's, and it's, it's tough to do, but sometimes kids become number one. I'll give you a perfect example. This morning, um, my kids, we were, we were eating breakfast before, you know, I had a workout in the morning, we had breakfast, then we come here, and my kids asked me, um, Dad, how come we, don't, we can't play our football game today? That's bogus, man. What's up with that? <laughs> they didn't say that, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> they said, I said, well, guys, um, you know what? Our, our priorities are God first, then our family uh, and that's kind of how we do it. So, and all all these other recreational activities, those are those are down the line. And Blaze looks at me and goes, "Well, well, can we still have a game after or something, man? Can we get? Well, yeah, dude, we'll get out in the back. You know, we'll throw the football around. We'll, I'll, I'll drill you, dude. I'll crush you. you know? <laughs> Don't worry about it. It won't be flag football. I'll nail you. You know? <laughs> I didn't say that either. Why am I lying to you?